is Kungara, in the heart of Kakadu, the most recent addition to the Northern Territory's World Heritage National Park. Beautiful area. We're up in the um, stone country now, escarpment. Yep. Waterfall. Traditional around. owner Jeffrey Lee owns this land. It contains his Jock clan's dreaming stories. This is Blue Tongue Dreaming here. So where we up here in this garden, this is where Guri Brangdoi home. And his Binning people have lived here for generations. And underneath too. This one here was a lady, woman figure. These paintings on the rock, they've been done many, you know, they've been done thousands, thousands, thousands of, thousands of years. And they're still here today. So this is some of the parts of the old mining sheds. The retired park ranger spent years resisting pressure to allow a uranium mine on the land and rejected millions of dollars in mining royalties because he wanted to protect it. You can do other things than destroying country. Well, that's why I said no to mining at Kungara because there's a lot of other ways we can make money. And by other ways, that means getting visitors overseas, Australia, but mainly overseas, they're the one that bring the money. This area has remained close to the public since Geoffrey Lee gave it to the National Park a decade ago. He wants to lead the first tourism here, but doesn't yet know how. For Kungara, I just want to start off very small, not big. This to get used to because it's first time and I don't know much about that tourism side of, yeah. Over here, I've got a spear. The shop or a hibiscus. He's hoping he can learn from people like Neville Nummernyilk, a binning custodian and guide with Guliambi cultural cruises. This Guliambi has been operating almost 30 years and it's run and owned by Aboriginal, and it's operated by Aboriginal, and it's really good to see um, binning people got their business running and, and making changes, and, and that's, that's really good, and we'd like to see some more. One, two, and three. Wouldn't be that great if the whole park would have been operating by the binning people of Kota National Park, and yeah, I would like to see that. Traditional owners jointly manage Kakadu with the federal government, but there have been increased tensions over the area in recent years. It's one of the reasons the number of attractions open to tourists has shrunk. In 2019, popular tourist hotspot Gunlom Falls was closed after a walkway was built by the federal government close to a sacred site. Today, the director of National Parks apologised for what had happened, saying lessons learned from this situation will improve how Parks Australia executes projects. Senior custodian Joshua Hunter says traditional owners are now considering reopening Gunlom, possibly next year, but first want assurances they'll get compensation and other financial assistance. they got to come down and, and see what's happening on the grounds to to help us make amends, help lift the traditional owner group out of poverty. I've witnessed first end and lived first end in poverty. Um, you know, while that, while the government has been occupying our land, and um, we feel when you know our demands are not being met as traditional owners, uh, you know, we're in this deal together, and you know, they should come to the table with, with better uh, living standards, uh, better funding and better opportunities for us to thrive as, as Indigenous people. Geoffrey Lee is closely watching the Gunlom Falls dispute. We can close things, we can close. We can close up the park, but um, I want to work with people from Canberra. And if people from Canberra can work with us and support us and help us and let us more, do us more business, and look after our country the way we want to manage and look after our country. And that'll change a lot of things. 
The Federal Environment Minister says she's previously met with Jeffrey Lee and listened to him and other traditional owners about their wishes for the park. And that Parks Australia is considering the need for new and revitalised infrastructure to support tourism and to provide opportunities for local Indigenous employment and business. So there's two main cultural sites in the park. Ubi Kakadu Ubi. tour operator Greg Taylor feels not enough is being done to keep popular sites open. Sometimes that brings about disappointment um, and it certainly impacts on the markets because what it does is, is it creates an air of uncertainty and Kakadu certainly already has that. The tourism industry is increasingly frustrated with the government because in recent years, some of Kakadu's most popular destinations, like the Jim Jim Falls, have been kept closed well into the peak tourist dry season. In our view, that's, that's just unacceptable. That, that's not sustainable from a tourism perspective. So, we, yeah, we agree that there needs to be more human resources and perhaps they need to maybe, you know, replan their work scope to prioritise some of these sites so that we can get them open for visitors. He is excited about the prospect Geoffrey Lee could begin opening Kungara. Any access that we can get to any part of Kakadu is always a bonus. But I would certainly encourage Geoffrey to pursue that. And, you know, as a tourism operator, and in, in fact, I speak for the entire industry, we're looking for partnerships. The closures and late openings leave some tourists feeling they've missed out. It's been beautiful, but initially a little bit disappointed. A lot of the waterfalls and the waterholes that we wanted to go to were closed. But many are still being wowed by the sights. It's amazing, like, just to see how old some of this rock art is and just the landscape around it. It's, um, it's quite magical and very special. Geoffrey Lee knows it will be challenging to establish his own tourism business but he's determined. It's only just a start off. It's just a process. I've got to just go through it, you know, through it all. It's all new. But in the future, it's going to happen.